The Hugh Jackman Diaries. I'm always looking for new forms of entertainment to try my hand at and to conquer. I recently found myself wandering down Swanson Street. A lot of people have trouble drinking. They end up staggering around and then they pass out. I'm the opposite. I wake up and I'm already staggering around. On this occasion, I came to and found myself staggering down Swanson Street. I'd had a big night out with Neighbours superstar Stefan Dennis. As is the case with most of our nights out, it lasted three nights. We ended up at my favourite night spot, The Welcome Stranger on Burke Street. I'd just received a royalty check for DVD sales of the film Moon. I know I wasn't in the film, but I still received them checks. Moon royalty checks are one of the benefits of going through the mail in Sam Rockwell's letterbox every time I'm in LA. I was there last week for a meeting with Spielberg about directing a blockbuster script I'd written. It's called The Man with the Golden Pecs. It's about a guy born with bulging, shiny pecs made of 100 carat gold. I'd play the guy. No makeup or special effects would be needed. Everyone in the world loves him. He kicks their ass. It's inspired by real events. The meeting with Spielberg wasn't as productive as I'd have liked. He was more concerned with what I thought were minor details. He kept saying things like, get off my property, it's four o'clock in the morning, and honking your horn and doing burnouts in my driveway won't get me to look at your script. Spielberg can be such an oversensitive pussy. Besides, I'm starting to feel he's probably a bit too arthouse for my project anyway. So, I was staggering down Swanson Street after an all three nighter at The Welcome Stranger. I'm not sure what happened to Stefan. The last I remember of him was him saying something about, yes officer, as a matter of fact, I do have a legitimate excuse for my nudity. Now, if you uncuff me, close your eyes and count to 10, I'll tell you what it is. What a guy. Another thing I remember about the night was that what money wasn't spent on chartreuse was spent in one of them pokey machines. The freaking Excalibur one. I swear, no wonder that King Arthur felt the need to carry his sword around with him everywhere. When you're too tight to give a brother a row of bloody cherries when he's down to his last dollar, you're bound to get into a scuffle or two. I didn't have a scent on me. It was cold. Hadn't eaten for three days. I had no way of getting home. Then I spotted, lying in the gutter, a $50 note. I picked it up. Here I was, cold, hungry, penniless, and with a $50 note in my hand. A gift from the gods, or at least from that woman pushing the pram whose purse I'd seen it fly out of. I did what anyone in my position would do. I exchanged the $50 note for 25 $2 coins and went down to the Crazy Horse Cinema and got myself 25 $2 peep shows. What better way to spend an afternoon? The chick in the peep show looked familiar. It took me until my seventh $2 coin to work it out. It was singer, actor, former Shantuzi rock god, Ali Fowler. I started tapping the glass and shouting that Shantuzi song to her, the one that goes, don't want to be up, don't want to be down. I didn't know any of the other words, so I just sang those words over and over again. Also, because I was listening to Children of Bottoms' Follow the Reaper album on my Discman, I was shouting them Shantuzi lyrics to the tune of the Follow the Reaper title track. By the twelfth $2 coin, I realised it wasn't Ali Fowler after all. It was just that some of them poses she was pulling reminded me of Ali specifically of a time a few years back, when me and her had spent an intimate couple of hours together. Oh, Ali, you sure know how to make being stuck in an elevator a passionate experience. And I know all the other passengers in there with us at the time felt the same way. It was at my 21st $2 coin when the girl seemed to yawn. I couldn't believe it. How dare she disrespect show business like that. One thing an entertainer doesn't do is drop their guard, break the illusion. I got out of my booth and went round to the stage door and walked in. The Chantuzzi chick got a fright and grabbed her gown. I told her, I think you know why I'm here. I'll show you how it's done, babe. She ran out, clearly intimidated at the thought of sharing centre stage with a megastar like me. And there, in front of about a dozen other dudes peering through the peepholes, I gave them a once in a lifetime experience. Some songs from The Boy From Oz, some dance from the Academy Awards host and gig, and some action scenes from X-Men Origins Wolverine, all at the same time. And I still had my headphones in, so I was doing it all to the tune of Children of Bottoms' Follow the Reaper album. There was a pole in the middle of the room. I shimmied up the pole to the ceiling and was going to slowly twirl down to the floor. Instead, I made the spontaneous decision to lose grip and fall smack on me back onto the floor. But I made it look all part of the show, and that's the point I was trying to make. You always respect your audience. Sure, I was on me back, but I continued all the dance moves, me arms and legs swinging in the air in perfect timing to the Children of Bottom music in me headphones, still singing at the top of me lungs. All the other dudes through the peephole started showing their appreciation by banging on the glass and shouting things at me. It was magic, the roar of the crowd. You can't beat it. And with a perfect sense of timing, some security guards came in and lifted me, aloft. I heard all the peephole dudes cheering behind me. It was another showbiz triumph. I'd conquered yet another form of entertainment. 
the security guards carried me off like a king into eternity. Yes, I will live forever, destined to be remembered as the star of stage, of screen, and now of peep shows. Hugh Jackman. The The Hugh Jackman Jackman Diaries. Diaries.